Pray with me. Lord God, thank you for these words that you have given me to say in such a time as this. I pray that they resonate with each and every person that hears and takes deep root in their heart. That through it all, we will be better for you, better for one another, better for our families and our communities. In Jesus' name, amen. During the past week, I have been thinking, praying, and discerning, God, what would you have me to say to your people during such a time as this? And God put it upon my heart, we need to speak to what is God doing at this time. So I came up with a sermon title, Zoom Out, Zoom Out. When the unexpected happens, we're prone to become frustrated, paralyzed, we make excuses. However, these tend to be responses, they're of the flesh. And these responses, we, we, we kind of lose sight of the power of God, the position of God, and the provision of God in our lives. Why do we make excuses about the unexpected? Why? Because we haven't planned for it. But we really just want things to continue how they've always have been going, even if they're not going well. We then seem to have more faith in our rudimentary routines of life than we have in the one who gave life, the one who informs and transforms life. I, I know for, for me, I had this idea when, when everything starts breaking loose and, and the quarantines and the, the restrictions on how we move about and how we gather. I, I, for one, had this as a thought. Well, well, as a church family, we're going to meet no matter what. Nobody is going to stop. I had this kind of mentality. But then I had to pause because... My spirit of, of discernment says, says, says why? Um, is this God talking or is this Cedric talking? Were my actions initially a stand for God or was it a stand for our rudimentary routine, life as we know it to continue? I paused and I prayed and, and was reminded of the account of Moses as he stood at the banks of the Red Sea. The people were panicked. The people were fearful. There was so much uncertainty as what was going to happen. And Moses calmed the people with these words. He says, do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance of the Lord that will bring you today. And I see that as my charge here today. When there is much fear and uncertainty and in some cases all out panic in our present state in the entire world. I stand before you to echo these words of Moses. Do not be afraid because we have been given the spirit of God in us who bears witness with our spirit that we do not have to be led, imprisoned, and shackled by fear. Standing firm means standing on our faith. Review in your life what God has already done. Ask yourself the question, has God ever left me? Has God ever forsaken me? Review the promises of God. I never have 
have seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. That's me. God will provide for not just some, but all of my needs. And it may not be in the way that I think or would desire God to provide, but when I take a step back and look, God is still providing in the midst of panic. And in the midst of this situation, we together will see the deliverance. We will see the salvation that the Lord will bring us today. While we're trying to figure it out, God has already worked it out. We're going to talk for a little while about when God allows uh, an interruption to life, it's time to zoom out. Perspective is a word that simply means how you view something. And too often, our perspective of events that go on in our lives, especially if those events are not pleasing, we, we, we tend to, we, we refer to them as storms. And, and when a storm occurs, we tend to be more focused on the pressure of the storm, the pain of the storm, and we search for the whys, the hows, and, and, and we can't see anything beyond the storm and today I want to give remedy that 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 will give us a different perspective in the storm one that is more fruitful that will give us victory instead of just existing as a victim and to do that we need to zoom out when I was younger I, I received a gift of some binoculars and as I as I as I used and played with the binoculars I became very fascinated at watching birds and I looked at the bird this bird one day and the bird seemed to be acting very erratic I kept looking but couldn't figure out why the bird was acting such a way. So I took the binoculars and put them down, and that allowed me to zoom out on the whole situation. But then I saw the tree shaking. I saw the clouds rolling up. I saw a predator about to, to, to pounce on the bird. When I zoomed out and got a better perspective of what was going on, then it made sense of why the bird was acting and reacting such a way. And I believe that through this interruption of life we're going through right now, God is telling us and instructing us it's time to zoom out. It's time to just to, to stop just focusing on the discomfort, the quarantine. Time to stop just being mad about the restrictions. It's time to zoom out so that we can see God at work. Zoom out so we can see what God is doing around us. Zoom out so we can see what God is doing inside of us. Zoom out so we can see God's plan and in order to zoom out there needs to be a return to true worship and see I'm not necessarily talking about public worship as we gather at the church house but individual worship of God I believe that public worship in the church house has been undermined because individually we've become distracted we're physically here, but we're not on one accord spiritually. We have lost the power that that worship brings in our lives. I took a cruise once, and on that cruise, there was a tremendous storm that came. And there was some rocking of the ship. But as I experienced this storm, I said to myself, I, I, I can see and feel that this storm that we're in is more powerful than this ship 
but why is the ship not affected the way that I think it would with this kind of wind and rain blowing? So I inquired, and I asked someone who would know. I saw the captain of the ship, and I said, why is it that this ship is not thrown about in the midst of this powerful storm? And he explained to me that the ship is, is equipped with stabilizers to counteract the effects of the storm and allow the ship, although, albeit in a storm, to sail smoothly despite the strength of the storm. I said, wow. I thought to myself, in our distraction, or should I say disconnection, with God, we, we have lost personal worship as our stabilizer in the midst of the storm. We have lost our ability to smooth, say, sail smoothly in the storm, and we find ourselves responding in the storm erratically. And I believe in this time, God has says, enough of that. It's time for revival. It's time for per a perspective change. It's time to zoom out and see what's really going on here in us and around us and that we will come out of this season of storm better. God has already told us, apart from me, you can do nothing. God demands praise, and not just any praise. God demands hallelujah, which is the highest praise. It's time for a perspective check. It's time for a zoom out to see, what do I see? I see as I zoom out exalted praise for sports of all kinds. I see just just ecstatic cheering like never before, while the praises of God are oftentimes quailed, shackled, or muted. Well, we find ourselves now in the midst of canceled tournaments, empty stadiums, Balls on the court, the courses, and the fields have come to a screeching halt. Why? Because we needed a perspective check to say, have I lifted up sports higher than God? I mean, would you ever thought that, that, that some of the things that have been delayed changed and canceled would have ever happened because they become so synonymous with life, so much money tied to these events. March Madness, the Masters, list of championships, state, local, national, all brought to a halt. Why? To give us a perspective and a reminder, have no other God before me. As I zoom out, what do I see? I see dedication and commitment to jobs and places of employment to the point where my job is the loudest voice I hear. My job then dis dictates my life and guides my life. I have skills on my job that I'm praised for, promoted for, awarded because of, while my commitment to God's ministry is left anemic. The plan God has for my life is not sought after because I'm looking for the next raise, bonus, and promotion. So, job. And labor has been all but brought to a screeching halt. It has been paused and interrupted. Why? To give us perspective. That my job or my pace of employment, this is what I do, but it's not who I am. It's not who I was created to be. Interrupted to say, what more do I need to do for God to have some balance in my life? As I zoom out, 
What do I see? I see us being consumed with feeding our bodies while, and, and there's an anemic hunger and thirst after the word of God. So what do I see? I see restaurants closed, carry out only. Our normal eating routines have been interrupted. Pause. Why? As a reminder that man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. I zoom out. And what do I see? The, the Lord has seen us fall in love with the busyness of life and become defined by doing not being, yet our relationship with God has simply become compartmentalized. And, and God and all of God's splendor is just not enough for us. We say, God, you're cool where you fit in my life, but my life needs to be more than just about you. That's how I will be completely fulfilled. I need you and sports, you and a job. I need you and dinners and vacation. I need you and the life the way I planned it. And without even realizing it, we have slowly drifted away from God to a reality of the worship of normalcy. We are worshiping routine. The way we've always done it is the loudest voice we hear, and that's what directs us, the way we've always done it. And it was, a time, it was now time for an interruption to that routine, or should I say that rut, of life. And, and as I zoom out, I see God continuing to protect us and pursue us. I am reminded, just like God delivered Israel out of Egypt into the isolation of the desert. Why did he do that? To break them away from what had become normal and routine in their lives. Look at how similar we are to the way they were living. Their normal way of life was the slavery of work. Idolatry was norm. The complete adoption of the culture that surrounded them, or should I say affected them, you couldn't tell an Egyptian from an Israelite other than the clothes they wore. And God brought interruption to this normalcy and brought them out of that existence. And I want to remind you that he did not immediately take them from, from, from that existence in Egypt and go right into a promised land. Why? Because there was too much of the world in them. So there had to be a time of isolation and separation from the world, a removal of everything familiar and normal so, so that their only focus would be God. They had to learn how to rely on God alone. They had to learn how to worship God alone. They had to grow in their faith in God alone. God delivered them to a season of isolation to teach them how to be children of God. I thought about this as we faced the last two weeks and as we face weeks and maybe months to come. Now hear me, I'm not saying that God caused this horrible virus but I believe that God is using it the same way he hardened Pharaoh's heart to bring about a change in his people. And if we for, for a moment could focus uh, uh, on God and not the virus, zoom out to see God working in this situation. What is God up to? Why, why has this quarantine or 
isolation brought everything normal in our lives to a halt. Sporting events, commerce, shopping, dining out, movies, vacation, everything gone. Why? Because I feel God is calling his people to revival. And before this revival comes, there needs to be some individual work, some individual worship during this time of isolation. Then when we get back together, we will be better for God, better for one another, better for the communities we serve. We've been confined to our homes. I don't believe that's by accident, but it's to remind us that God has told us your first ministry is at home. Ministry starts at home. We've lost that. We've lost generation after generation because we don't understand that our first ministry and priority is the home. Our children have been led astray by the world and our worldly actions. Our marriages have struggled because of the time sacrificed to the world and the lack of nurture to our married relationships. I remember as a child, my mother pouring into us Bible stories. I remember her reading the story of David and Goliath. I remember her instructing us about Noah and the flood. I remember the stories of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. I remember my mother teaching me how to pray, our Father which art in heaven. I knew that prayer before I knew the Pledge of Allegiance. It's time to realize that our families and marriages need our presence more than our paychecks. God is giving us a chance in this isolation to revive family relationships that are on hospice or have been pronounced dead by breathing life into them. During this time of, of desert isolation, we've, be, we've been given the opportunity to, to become stronger in our prayer life. I've heard many say, you know, I want to pray more. I want to pray better. I want my prayer life to grow. Well, this is the time. You got all the time in the world. Set a time on your phone every day to pray. Multiple times uh, 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 pray. See, the noise of life has been calmed. We have time to pray, uninterrupted prayer undistracted prayer pray individually pray with your family teach your kids how to pray married couples you want your relationship to heal you want your relationship to grow and be closer than ever then pray out loud with one another pray out loud for one another during this time of isolation we've been given the opportunity to grow in faith through the study of God's word. Listen, I've been on social media and people trying to find everything to entertain themselves during this time of isolation. People are requesting, what are the new movies on Netflix? Video gaming is at an all time high. I, this is a time for me to do projects around the house. And don't get me wrong, there's nothing necessarily wrong with that, but if we only use this time to catch up on our movies, to become master gamers, to get the house fixed up, then we're going to come out of this even more broken than we went into it. How about taking time to read the Bible and, and, and read it like this, maybe just a book of the Bible, just take a book and read it like this. Find out who wrote it. Find out who the audience was. What was the climate going on that necessitated a book like this? Read it for transformation, not just for information. Now, we just came out of a seven-part series called 
the Better Me series. And the hopes was, uh, our goal was after we went through this series that each person would be able to look at themselves and see a better them. Why, uh, wouldn't you know, it's not a coincidence that all of a sudden after this seven-part series, now we have a new way of worshiping for a season. It's time to reflect. Go back. Listen to those sermons, watch those sermons, take notes. What does it mean for me that, that when we come out of not only the series, but when we come out of this time of isolation, that we will be better? As I zoom out, I see the churches have been meeting in person, but we're still segregated because our singular focus is not God. We're here physically, but spiritually and emotionally, we're all over the place. And God is now calling us to revival. And that if we spend this time of isolation in true discernment of, of our relationship with God and what is God's will and what is God's plan for us, I believe when we come back together, we'll come back stronger for God, stronger for one another. And we can be that transforming agent in this world that God desires and has called us to be. In this time, we will, re, we will, we will rediscover the power of worship as my stabilizer to my ship in the midst of the storm. Restore my spiritual equilibrium. It restores my emotional and physical equilibrium. It allows me to sail smoothly in the storm despite the strength of the storm. You know why? In my life, I'm not tossed by the waves of the storms of life. It's because when I shout hallelujah to the Lord, I'm able to regain perspective. In the midst of the storm, I shout, God, you are the creator of all. God, you are my protector. You take care of the birds of the air. So I know during this time, you will take care of me. You have provided for me in ways that I never even thought possible. You have never left me nor forsaken me. When I worship, I zoom out. And I focus on what I can praise God for, not what I'm lacking. Instead of being drowned and capsized by the storms of life, when I worship, you know, I have victory. Worship allows us to zoom out and see a perspective that 2,000 years ago, Jesus died on the cross for the penalty of my sin. I zoom out and see that God loves me, and, and when I least expect it, God loves me when I least deserve it. I zoom out and see that God is going to get me to where God wants me to be. I zoom out and see that I have an eternity with God to look forward to in a place where there is no mourning, no sorrow, no pain, no crying, no dying, and no virus. I zoom out and see that God does not allow any experience in my life to go wasted. So it's not time to just focus on what we're not allowed to do but on what God has provided us the opportunity to do. This interruption, this isolation has given us time to focus on God, on family, prayer, and study. And that worship of God can be the stabilizer for our ship in the storms of life. It's not a time for panic, but it's a time for praise. It's a time for prayer. What an exciting time that God has provided for us during this time of isolation. Don't let this time leave you unchanged God is trying to heal you 
wherever you hurt, 